we start with the lecture number 33rd optimal unit commitment i already explained you what is unit commitment uh, say for example there is a load now that load varies from hour to hour day to day week to week so you cannot have a a permanent solution the which unit should be on and which unit should be off it varies from load to load so suppose there is a given load now we have to find out which units of the power station should be on to tackle that load to take up that load and which units which are not required should be put off one zero available not available working not working this is the binary situation which solution you have to find out and this is called unit commitment problem solution. Now the it is not economical to run all the units available all the time. For a given load to determine which unit should be on is the unit commitment problem. Now why this problem is only important for thermal power plants? It is not important for hydro nor it is important for nuclear. Let me first explain you why it is not important for nuclear because nuclear power plants are base load power plants. There is hardly any control which you can have on nuclear power plant. If you remember recently the prime minister has inaugurated 500 megawatt uh, unit nuclear unit a fast breeder reactor in Kalpakam near Chennai. So once it is on it remains on and it supplies the base load. Base load as I explained you earlier is a load which is there for all the time. So there is no variation. So there is no variation in this nuclear power units barring the maintenance period. Similarly hydro there is no fuel, there is no money involved in the fuel. Fuel is water, a water is available free of charge. So there is no optimization involved as and when and then the main reason it is, is a quick starting units. The hydro units do not take much time to start. So, where is the question of uh, a priori planning done? Uh, this is just available to you and that is why, but thermal units on the contrary needs lead time of 2 to 8 hours depending on whether the boiler was cold, whether the coal is just put, there is no steam, you have to start from cold start hot start etcetera etcetera and that is why this problem is important only for thermal power plants. The first paper in this area came in 1959 the author was Baldwin. He just applied a simple suboptimal approach. He did a priority ordering like you have the priority ordering in a class who is the best student, the next best and next best and so on and normally teacher should cater to the last student in the class. If he understands it is assumed that everybody is understood. This class is meant for all the students not for a few top students. So here what they do they create a list of all the units available in a particular power plant. Let us say in the press power plant there are 5 units, let us say Badarpur power plant there are 5 units, you know your units very well. So you can always say which is your best unit, the next best, the next best and the last best. On what grounds? One thing can be CGPA, another can be all round performance, sports, extracurricular activities, co-curricular activities, dramatics. Uh, whether he is taking part in uh, union, the students uh, you know uh, activities, SRA whatever it is. So similarly here the various uh, figures of merit are efficiency which is the most efficient unit number one. Next can be cost which is the cheapest unit, it, uh, other alternative can be pollution where you use if provided you use a different fuel for different units. If you use the same fuel for all units pollution thing is gone because it will create similar pollution. But if you have a different uh, fuel for different units one is oil, one is coal, the third is uh, uh, let us say gas and so on. Then you can have uh, one parameter as pollution. 
So, these are various reliability, the unit has never failed. So, that is your most reliable unit, have it number 1. So, first number 1 will take the load, if still load is left, then second, still some load is left, then third, no load is left, fourth, fifth, take rest, 0, 0. So, this is the suboptimal approach, though it is so obvious, but yet it took the Balvin to write a paper and present it to explain to the world, look, this is how you should work. It is however, a suboptimal approach, it is not an optimal approach, that is called priority ordering. So, this is what I have written three things, cost, pollution or emission, reliability, efficiency. I have already talked about all the, all the four. First most efficient as load increases, less and less efficient unit is put into operation. Right? For example, how do you do your expenses? Suppose you got your scholarship. First is most important expenses, fees, otherwise you will be out of IIT. Then food, otherwise you will not be given food perhaps. I do not know what are the rules here. Room rent, electricity bill, then comes your books, who reads books anyway or your other expenses, restaurant, cinema, etcetera, etcetera. So, this is a priority you have fixed for yourself, nobody else, it is you who have to fix your priorities. Try all possible combination is one option, which will be the most optimal. Try all possible combination, first unit, second unit, second unit, first unit. You must have read permutation combination in your a high school or middle school or wherever, but best is to apply optimization technique. The try all possible combination is like present day doctors do, blood test, urine test, stool test, MRI, sex ray, everything, because they get commission or they do not want to take any chance. There can be second over, uh, school of thought also, he may not get any commission, yet he wants to play safe. Tomorrow something happens to student, his job is in danger, right. Study today's paper, you must have seen a wrong injection was given to a student and he died, not student, to a boy. Have you, have you read that news? Times of India, third page, student photo, is, not student, some boy's photo is there. He must be student somewhere. Anyway, so uh, optimization techniques. Now, I have already told you several times what is optimization. Optimization field started because of Second World War. Did, did I tell you this, this story? Huh? So, one yes is there. Others who do not remember can go to him and ask. There was a leader who came for giving lecture. He said, How many people know what I am going to speak? Some half the hands came up. How many people know, do not do not know what I am going to speak? Then another half. Those who know should tell to another people, those who do not know. So, this gentleman knows what I said. I said what uh, Churchill told to his uh, scientists and engineers. He called a meeting and he said, War has started. I have limited resource, though the, the UK was ruling the whole world, there was no sunset in, in British empire those days. Uh, New Zealand sun rises and it goes up to right up to West Indies and Canada, you know. So, 24 hours there is a sun in the British empire. So, he says you start working towards optimization, I do not want people to die, I do not want people uh, to spend more money, yet I want to win the war. So, objective function was winning a war, subject to minimum casualties, minimum expenses, this is objective function. Here you want to satisfy a load, this is your problem. Objective function is with minimum cost, with minimum pollution, with maximum reliability these are the optimization problems, subject to the load has to be met and etcetera, etcetera. So, BB, BB is branch and bound technique, DP is dynamic programming technique, IP is integer programming technique, LP is linear programming, 
MIP is mixed integer programming etcetera. If you have done the optimization technique course and electrical there are one course uh, power system optimization have you done that course electrical people, but that is for power system people not control you are in control, but you do optimal control right. So, it is similar to that you have then uh, you know some j is there in defined calculus of variation dynamic programming also you must have read Bellman's uh, uh, you know condition and uh, principle of optimality you know all those things uh, they have done. Let us do only one method we do not have time only three more lectures left. So, dynamic programming we will do now dynamic programming is applied as your control uh, friends will know when you have to take multi stage decision that means decision is not to be taken in one go what are these uh, practically every problem in life has to be solved in stages i don't think like uh, maharashtra is 10 days are over they are still solving the problem who should be the ceo the airplane the pilot does not take the plane I do not know how many of you have had air uh, travel anybody has anybody travelled in air by now as and when you travel first time you will see pilot does not take the plane to the height of 33,000 feet or 11,000 meters in one go it is not that the moment he takes off and he goes up to 33,000 no he goes in stages he goes and then clouds gone then further go up and then stages. So, it is a multi stage he controls in a way that eventually it goes into 33,000 height which is the most optimum height where the plane can go in at the very fast speed. Uh, marriage you do not just see and marry you first some uncle will go then father will go and then some auntie will go and in olden days the you know it is it is to be done in stages you have to see what sort of uh, house they live in what is the qualifications and so on both sides it is not one side. So, you take time you studies you do not study right from July 1 or August 1 to November 24th or whatever date till your exam last with the same tempo you relax a bit then you start then you have a rendu or whatever then Diwali and whatever. So, you go in a uh, zigzag fashion and you plan your way which subject to study more whose teacher is uh, lenient which teacher is tough what are his past record what sort of grades he used to give you find out everything you know past history and then you tune accordingly your studies right. So, similarly here I take an example of four units each unit is of 12 megawatt capacity each unit is of 12 megawatt capacity and I have a load of 9 megawatt my job is to satisfy load of 9 megawatt this is a small township village maybe of 100 people and load is of uh, let us say 9 megawatt and 4 units of small now we are going for smaller units as I told you dispersed system you know uh, distributed system I already explained you if not you can read the chapter 1 and that is a very good thing for interviews normally interviews nobody will ask unit because nobody knows unit commitment hardly anybody would have studied unit commitment. So, they will only ask you general things which are given in chapter 1 new edition third edition let us take any one unit randomly f 1 x is equal to f 1 x this is only one unit. So, cost of that unit is the overall cost there is no difference between the overall cost and the <coughs> unit cost the unit itself is 1. So, f 1 9 the formula is quadratic formula half a p g square plus b p g a and b are cost coefficients we have already seen last time how do you fit in cost curve there is a just to recapitulate this is the curve this is your cost and this is your p in megawatt and this curve curve fitting we can have a quadratic curve and this is a quadratic curve a and b are 
coefficients. Curve fitting technique, all of you know. So, numerical analysis. The values of A's and B's are given. I am substituting that. So, it is 0 0.385 into 9 square plus 23.5, which is the value of B1 into 9. The answer is 242.685 rupees per hour for 9 megawatt. If you use just one unit, you can use because each unit is of 12 megawatt. So, each unit can satisfy 9 megawatt, no problem. Now, here in this slide, I am giving you the data. The 4 units, the if unit is on, this question I asked in minor 2 that there is a minimum load which must come on if unit is on. So, minimum load is 1, below 1 should not be operated. Once it operate, minimum has to be 1, it cannot be 0. I have already explained you the reason in earlier lectures. Maximum is 12, that is the highest capacity. Cost curve characteristics are given A and B. 0.7723 point. If you can see this and you are all intelligent, you are being IIT students, you can say it is in order of increasing cost. I have already prioritized the 4 units in order of increasing cost. So, it makes sense to use first unit to satisfy 9 megawatt. Now, what is dynamic programming? As I said, it uses, it gives you recursive relation. You ask your control friends and principle of optimality has to be applied. Right? So, this is that recursive relation which we have to write for any time you use dynamic programming. F n x, what is the meaning of this? If you want to satisfy x megawatt by n units, then this is the cost is equal to minimize on y f n y start from nth unit, the last unit. Let last unit taken y megawatt load. <coughs> then remaining x minus y will be taken by remaining n minus 1 units. Sum it and we want to minimize it. Optimization variable is y. What should be the value which should come on the nth unit? This is the equation. If you can solve it, you will get optimization. Now, I am not going to do here uh, Bellman's principle or principle of optimality. You can read dynamic programming either in optimization books uh, or in control books. These uh, three guys are sitting here. They should be able to explain you what is uh, dynamic programming. Now, we have got a value of cost for one unit. Suppose we take two units and yet we want to satisfy 9 megawatt. Now, we use the step size as 1 megawatt. It is up to you what step size you want to use. I want to use 1 megawatt for which is sufficiently accurate and easy to calculate. You can calculate even by hand. So, what are the various possible combinations? Second unit 0, first unit all the 9, second unit 1, first unit is 8, second unit 2, first unit 7 and so on. Last is second unit full 9, so first unit 0. These are the only possible combinations. Once you say my step size is 1 megawatt. If you say 2 megawatt, this will change. If you say 0.5 megawatt, this will change. But as long as step size is 1 megawatt, this is the equation you will get. Now, you evaluate it. On comparing term by term and computing, we get the ideal combination, optimal combination is 2 megawatt should come from second unit and 7 megawatt should come from first unit. And the answer is less than the first one, 239, it was 242, if you recall, 0.565 rupees per hour. That means, it is better to satisfy 9 megawatt by combination of 2 units rather than 1 unit alone. This is a clear message. I get from this so far calculations. Similarly, we can compute F 2 8, F 2 0, all these things we can find out for other uh, loads. Find out F 3 9, I add third unit for 9 megawatt. 
same combination third unit 0, two units combination 9. Please see the beauty here, now you do not have to consider second and one unit separately again, because we have already had the combination. This is where it differs from all possible combinations. Now, I am not going to separate first and two, because I have already done that. That result is now available to me. So, I am not going to further segregate second and one, no. I have already seen that, I have already got the answers. So, now I say only third and block of first two. So, F 3 1, F 2 8, F 3 9, F 2 0, luckily or whatever we I find the result is third unit should not participate as the common sense will also tell you for 9 megawatt why do you need 36 megawatt on 12, 12, 12, 24 is enough which incidentally also takes reliability into account that if one of the two units fail still the consumer will never come to know about it right your single unit is capable of giving 9 megawatt because it is a 12 megawatt unit. So, the consumer should never come to know something has gone wrong in the plant. So, this also takes there is a built in inherent reliable operation guaranteed. The, so, the answer continues to be 239.565. Similarly, fourth unit needless to say that fourth unit has no business to operate and it continues to be the answers continues to be optimum units to be committed for a 9 megawatt load are 1 and 2. So, what are the total uh, solution? Total solution I will get is load unit number 1, 2, 3, 4, load is 1 megawatt, 2 megawatt and goes up to 48 megawatt, because there are 4 units, 12 megawatt each, 12 into 4, you did in your first class or nursery, I do not know which class, 48. Such a huge table you have to hang in front of you, you are the control engineer, you are the energy engineer in load dispatch center. I have been telling you requesting you to go to the across the road Katwara Sarai load dispatch center. In fact, control people should be more interested in going there, because it is all control going on there, AGC and things like that. So, you can have a trip organized by your coordinator, MTEC coordinator or whatever or you yourself can go there and just have a uh, look at that that will give you practical aspects, how they are controlling frequency, how they are controlling uh, economic operation, how they are doing unit commitment. All this whole power system course is going on there in practice and maybe you may feel enthused, interested in joining power grid, NTPC. It is not necessary to join only IT. What is IT? IT is a tool. You will apply IT here also and if you are doing good, you will get good money. Now, this can be 1 megawatt 100, zero, zero. I know only 9 megawatt solution, it was 1100. Zero, zero. Third unit not participating, fourth unit not participating, only first and second unit are participating. So, this table is called unit commitment table, but it is so big, why not telescope it and do what? do this. One to five, six to eleven, twelve to twenty, twenty one to forty eight, create a range one zero zero zero, one one zero zero, one one zero, one 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 one. Neat, compact. 4 by 4 matrix. After all, there is a load at which second unit comes in, there is a load at which the third unit comes in, there is a load at which fourth unit comes in. So, what is the big idea of having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 up to 48? Let us combine. Now, this is a neat, compact, good looking, short unit commitment table and this is this has to be computed once and for all. You do not have to compute it every day. 
as long as your fuel price remains same, as long as there is no DA increase, as long as your no maintenance charges increase, your operating cost remains same. Unless until A's and B's change, then this will change your coefficients, cost coefficients. So, this is called uh, unit commitment table using dynamic programming. Sharing the load as 7 megawatt and 2 megawatt respectively with minimum operating cost of rupees 239.565 per hour. Now, unit commitment table is optimally, OUC means optimal unit commitment table is independent of the numbering of units. It is not necessary that like load flow, optimal ordering you can order any bus 1, 2, 3, 4 without loss of generality. Suppose you order the most hopeless unit is number 1, it will be 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, it is all right, that is the only change it will be. So, it is not sacrosanct that you have to order, but it gives you logic that your most best candidate is number 1, then 2, number 3, number 4, when there is no problem at all. Higher accuracy means, well, if you want higher accuracy, half megawatt step size, 1 by 4 megawatt step size depends upon you. But if the load is 1000 megawatt, then step size normally chosen is 5 megawatt. There is no point in choosing, it is like it is a madness. Though you have a computer which is very fast, but still why do it? It is foolish. So, step size should be as per the problem. This is unit commitment table, which I have already shown you. These are the exact figures for that data. So, I will appreciate if one of you, some of you, all of you try to get this table yourself by writing a, some program C, C plus, C double plus, God knows how many pluses, whichever uh, programming you know, try to write a small program and see whether you get this result or not and that is a uh, sort of an assignment uh, I give you with uh, no marks, just motivation is that you, you will feel happy, oh I have got a unit commitment result and if you, if you appear in power grid or NTPC or NHPC or BHEL, you can tell them this is what I have done, this here is the result. So, this is the exact figures 1 to 5, 6, I wrote some figures there, this is exact which you should get. If you do not get it, do point it out to me, that, that will be my mistake, 6, 13, 14, 18, 19, 48. 1 shows unit running, 0 shows unit not running, available, not available, working, not working, binary situation. Can you visualize a non-binary situation? Yes. Anybody? That is called D rating of units. What is D rating? Anybody? Anybody, what is D rating? The unit is of 100 megawatt, but it has become old like me, 60 years. I turned 60 on 7th October. Now, once you become 60 means you are senior citizen. So, you are not supposed to be as efficient, as hard working as a 20, 21, whatever is your age group. So, once the Badarpur unit has already served for 10 years, 15 years, use full life span. I told you one word in reliability theory. Reliability engineering, there are MTech courses being run in IITs, Khadakpur is one of them, where there is a full fledged reliability engineering center and they run an MTech course. Here, there is a half center on reliability, ITMEC, 
uh, they run courses on reliability, maintenance, engineering. Yeah, useful lifespan of a human being is 100 years, bulb is 8000 hours, power plant is 25 years. So, aging, now you can certainly stop aging by certain cosmetics nowadays available even for gents. There was a time when there were no cosmetics for gents when I was of your age, but now even gents have a lot of cosmetics, beauty parlors almost equal space ladies and gents an equal crowd. So, here also there are some cosmetics and that is called retrofitting. I mean you do certain things whereas they, they, they get some vitality back. Of course, the part of maintenance you know. Still that 100 megawatt may reduce to 80 megawatt over a time period. So, it may not be 0, it need not be 1, it can be in between and this is called derated state. So, it, it the any unit can work in three state 1, 0 and derated. It is like cough and cold not fever. You are coming like this gentleman is not well is using his handkerchief and you know he is half heartedly here sitting not does not want to miss the class also but he is not fully fit as I can see. So, unit is working, but not at 100 megawatt working at 80 megawatt. Such a unit is called derated units. I do not think any book gives this concept, but this is a practical concept. It is a in pra practical, otherwise you will count it as, as if 100 megawatt is available, but no it is only 80 megawatt. There can be several derated states 60. Sometimes you would not like it to be working at 100 megawatt that is a different issue that is a economic operation problem how much power you want from that do not confuse that with derating. Derating is it, it, it is finished it is only 80 megawatt it is no longer 100 megawatt. So, there is a difference between the two. Then we come to reliability <coughs> whatever optimal solution we have found out is economic unit commitment. But I want secure or reliable unit commitment. Why reliability has suddenly become important? A customer is willing to pay more if you guarantee him the power because he is so much used to electricity. He cannot afford to spoil his food which is lying in a fridge. He wants to work in a corporate sector which all your cooling or heating depending on are you in Srinagar or are you in Europe or you are in America or Canada where temperature is very low. So, you need that comfort you need your uh, laptop to be on all the time that is why UPS is there and so many things are there. Now, reliability how do you compute reliability? How do you say that taxi stand is more reliable because you have to catch a flight at 4 o'clock. At that point you are not worried about 5 rupee extra. You want the taxi driver to get up for yourself, come to your room or your house, ring the call button, sir chaliye time ho gaya flight ka. This is called reliability. Another thing is you are getting up, you are putting tel uh, the, the alarm in telephone or cell phone you are asking your neighbor bhaiya utha dena or you know somebody goes for morning walk or somebody goes for early studies which is very rare nowadays. Normally students get up beyond 8 in our days they used to get up at 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock and used to study. So, past history what is this? How do you know the particular text stand is reliable because many people have I also got cap from there. So, you collect the data and say it is reliable and that is called uh, the data has to be its performance chart. So, you have the this chart for a unit this is uh, 1 this is 0 this is working not working available not available whichever word you want to use. Please notice one thing in this figure 
the working period has got to be much much more than not working otherwise there is something seriously wrong with the system. If you see your number of days you attended classes, if it is it has to be more than the number of days you have not attended unless until your objective function is not to attend the class because after all you get everything in the uh, book or everything is given in the best students class notes, they get circulated, they get xeroxed and if he explains you something, he treat his promise, so many things students do. If that is not the motivation and you would like to attend the class, then your for you one is to attend a class. Sometimes it may so happen, you are late, you are sick, you are not attending. So, this is on off, available, not available, up and down as in reliability parlance, it is called up state and down state and they plot it like this, up, down. Why do you go from up to down? Failure rate, lambda, lambda is failure rate. Once you come to down state, what is the job of a system engineer? Get your repair team plunge into action immediately, so that you come back to up state as early as possible. This is called repair rate. Lambda is called failure rate and mu is called repair rate. So, this rate will be available for each unit because each unit has this performance chart and from there only you can prioritize them if your reliability is your main aim 1, 2, 3, 4, resolve the problem with not cost in mind, but reliability. How do you compute reliability? LOLP, have you heard of LOLP? Loss of load probability. How many days in a year you are not able to supply power? This is an index of a particular utility, how good or bad that utility is. How many days you did not get a milk? That is the reliability of that person who gives you milk at your door step. You see newspaper you get every day, one day if you do not get newspaper you shout do not feel comfortable, you are that morning tea is no tea without a newspaper, you are accustomed, you are tuned, you are you know what you call addicted to having that one paper in hand and another cup of coffee or tea in another hand. So, you feel miserable if you if that fellow fails to deliver the newspaper at your doorstep. Another index is expected energy not served. This will give you the index of consumers annoyance. So, you are not able to serve the energy which is expected, it is your job. So, these are the various indices, they are calculated and then you categorize various uh, utilities and then you can calculate the unit commitment and call it a economic and secure unit. You can combine the both as is given in the book, you can see and then you will find that, we will do it in the next time and uh, that is the uh, overall optimum it is economical as well as reliable or secure, security. Next is, let us say these are 24 hours, this is 8 hours, 8 hours, 8 hours. For simplicity, I have drawn this load curve as three sub intervals. This is 20 megawatt, this is 5 megawatt. 
again 20 megawatt. Obviously, this time is night time. When Bombay, they say Bombay never sleeps, let us say Delhi, Delhi sleeps. So, it is those 5 hours, say let us say 11 to 4 o'clock. Okay, 5 hours, 11 pm to 4 am. Load is minimum, people are sleeping, industries are closed, <coughs> lights are minimal, only night lamp even AC is also off because of time, timer you know people are normally conscious of extra expenses. So, they just they want to sleep and then AC can be off, timer. Now, this is a very important concept, please look into this. I am a Badarpur in charge, okay. two units are working here as per that unit commitment table. One unit is working for 5 megawatt, again two units are working here because 20 megawatt back, day has started 4 am, people have started going for morning walk, working, some people start at 4 am to catch 8 o'clock office, coming from Rewadi, coming from Sonipat, coming from Mathura and so on. In throughout the world, people live in Pennsylvania and work in Washington DC, people live in New Jersey and come to New York every day 1 million people go from New Jersey to New York. Reverse is not that much, like from Delhi to Gurgaon not many people go, but whole Gurgaon comes to Delhi. Of course, now Gurgaon has many offices shifted, Citibank main offices in Gurgaon, British Airways main office in Gurgaon. So, maybe slowly it will be reversed. So, what is the decision I have to take as a Badarpur head? Should I continue to run these two units even during this period or I shut down one unit and restart, which is more better option, which is cheaper option. What happens when I run two units here for 5 megawatt, it is definitely a costlier option because I am unnecessarily running the second unit, I have to pay money for it, it is not free. But I say what? Startup cost. Otherwise, I have to start this second unit again here, which is not cheap, which also needs some money, and that is called startup cost. So, I have to compare two cases case A, both units running in the middle interval, case B, when one unit is running, one is shut off, and you compare and then we have an overall unit commitment, economic operation, secure operation, overall optimality considering startup cost this is also given in the book. Please read it. If you feel that you are not understood though after this explanation it should be clear, a numerical problem is solved using the same three sub interval example and see for yourself how the unit commitment gets changed and if you do not follow then we will do it next time. Mm -hmm.